Hey everybody, uh, here's today's project. It is a 54 Chevy pickup truck, the 3800 series. And unlike typical rescues we do lately, this one's not in the middle of a field, uh, in the middle of the woods. This one is actually in a driveway. It hasn't run in years, but it was recently put in this driveway and the owner wants me to give it a crack at getting it going. This, uh, this truck is the super long bed. I'm not sure what you really call it, um, but it is not your typical bed length. Um, it's got this heavy duty wraparound bumper. So it was no doubt a work truck as, as most trucks were back then. Um, it's got the eight lug wheels, typical of a 3800, which I believe is a one ton. Um, the bed is inside is, you know, not the best shape as you would expect. But you can see that the frame is quite, quite good, quite good. This is the spare tire carrier. This is probably the worst rust on it right here. Right there, water probably collected behind the spare tire. But look at the running boards. Um, th this thing is crazy solid. You know, you, you find these things sometimes in Tennessee like this. Seat's not bad. It's got some, I don't know what that is, like tar. It didn't come from the ceiling, so I'm not sure what that is. Somebody added seat belts. That's pretty cool. Those are like uh, late 60s, early 70s GM seat belts. Um, that's neat. Um, it's the very typical Chevy dashboard. Um, it's got a heater which was an option, four speed. I think that's a four speed on the floor. Start a button uh, rather than the key. It does have the key in it to turn the ignition, but that's all the key does is it turns the ignition. Um, we've got, this is a, this says C, I think that's a vent, I think. C for cold maybe. And we've got this knob here, which opens up the, the cab vent, which is right up in the back of the hood. I'll show you that in a minute. It's stuck. Um, let's see what else we got here. The brakes. Well, it's got no brakes whatsoever. It's got, yeah, it's, the clutch works. Um, at least enough to hold it here. Um, headliner is gone. It was a cardboard headliner from the factory. It's gone. Um, the battery, the battery box is here, it's stuck, so we'll have to look at that. Let's check my glove box. Yeah, these, these often do this, they just don't want to open. So we'll, we'll look at that later. Ashtray. Old hose, very old hose clamp. Wiper switch. Why don't you come in here from the other side and look at these gauges. They're, they're really cool. 8800 GVW. I guess that's where the 3800 comes from. Full set of gauges, as you would expect from a one-ton truck. And it's got directionals. Um, and I'm pretty sure these are factory. I remember these from when I was a kid and I remember that knob. I'm pretty sure those are factory. They don't, they don't look like they maybe work, but those are factory. Coming around to the front, those definitely aren't original. Again, very solid. A little tight here. The clearance. 
Um, very different front end in 54. Very, very different. Um, it, 54 was a transition year. The, uh, the Chevy pickups changed radically midway through 55. So this style was used in 54 and the first part of 55. So you sometimes can find these as 55s and you're like, that's not a 55. It actually is, it would be an early 55. Um, let's take a look under the hood. There we go. <laughs> Oops. Um, so this is a very typical engine of its day. The uh, straight six from Chevy. Um, I think this is the 216, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think it is. It's been converted to 12 volts at some point. Um, let's see if it's seized. Oh, well, it might be. It's probably in gear, so I, I can't check that right now. Hopefully, it's not seized. <laughs> so we got some friends over there on our left. Um, Coming over to this side, this this is great that this is here. I don't think that's factory, but hey, it's an oil bath. We'll take it. So everything is intact here, which is great. Of course, it's got a 12 volt coil because it's been converted. All the plugs are in, the plug wires are in, fuel pump is in. The fuel pump is old, but it's not ancient, which is great. Um, you got extra extra sheathing on all the, the wires. Um, let's see, the starter, it's rusty, but I'm hoping it's okay. It's got, here's the starter button drive. So we'll only be able to start it from inside by hitting that button. Um, I haven't figured out a way to start these with a trigger when they have that starter button. There's probably a way, I just don't know how to do it. Look at this, even the heater hoses are still hooked up. Wow, this one is literally hard as a rock hard as a rock i don't even want to touch it because it'll probably break this one is much softer for whatever reason um, so the goal for today is to get this going get it running and if we can get it running i'm going to put a master cylinder in it because there is there is no master cylinder um, what the owner would like to do is at least, at least get it moving so that he can put it up on a lift. There's a lift nearby and put it up on a lift and start to start to fix it up. But the way it sits right now, there's no way to do that. We have some friends about 30 feet away. So during the video, maybe they'll come up and say hello. So just clearing a path here to make it easier to work. Ugh, this stuff is a lot heavier than it looks. I'm going to block the wheels now to check if this thing's seized. Oh, wheel's already blocked. Okay, I'll block it again. I'm going to put it in neutral. and check if it's seized. So why don't you come in with the camera here? Okay, ready? Oh, oh man, it's really tight. Um, it did move a little bit, but... Oh. Oh. I don't know about that. It is really tight. Okay, um, I'm going to have to put some mystery oil in the cylinders in this thing. It's just not loose enough. All right, uh, first thing to do now that I know it's seized is get the plugs out, put mystery oil in the cylinders. This, the, this plug wire is, uh, was really stuck. 
Um, surprisingly, this, there's a lot of rust on the outside of the plugs, but that doesn't matter. Um, let's see if we can ascertain how old these plugs are. R43. I don't know if that size is available through Delco anymore. I really don't, but this is not an old plug. Someone probably changed that the last time it was running. It's starting to rain, unfortunately, but it just cools it off, so it's not really that big of a deal if it rains. Not to me, anyway. My head's usually under the hood anyway, so I'm fine. This plug like the others is fine but it's got a super narrow gap super narrow so maybe these weren't gapped when they were put in so one thing i always do is i always mark the plug wires little tape little marker you know on a six cylinder you're not going to get them screwed up but if you get out of the practice of doing it someday you're going to forget and you're going to have problems getting them back in because they're going to be out for a while. Um, I'm going to have to try to get this unseized and then I'm going to have to turn it over to blow the oil out. So I'm not going to remember, certainly. So I'm just putting mystery oil in the cylinders. As much as much as they'll take, some take more than others because the, the piston is farther down in the bore. But you can easily use two squirt cans of this stuff, which I have used in this easily. So I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to take the valve cover off and see how it looks in there. And maybe put some mystery oil in there too. All right, I'm going to take the valve cover off next. Oh man, that was super loose. That was super loose. That one too. Huh, that's strange. Um, you know, you don't have to have these super tight to get a seal. And in fact, they're not supposed to be super tight, but those weren't even finger tight. So that's interesting. Not necessarily bad. They've also got two washers on them. I don't know if that's factory or not. Go ahead. One of the first of many moments of truth is what it looks like under here. Looks great. Looks great. Really great. Inside the valve cover looks great. Wow. Yeah, that looks fantastic. nothing stuck. I don't see any stuck valves. Yeah, that's, that's all great. That's all excellent. I'm going to pour some mystery oil in there anyway, but don't really think it needs it. That is stuck.
Not at all. All right, so you can't see this, but what I'm doing is I'm going to take the flywheel plate off um, and see if I can get at the flywheel as a way to unseize this engine. The, uh, the crank is very, very difficult to get any kind of wrench on. Very difficult. So this is what I'm kind of forced to do. But this will work just fine. If it's not seized super tight, this will work just fine. So more later. All right, so I just took the uh, flywheel cover off and look at that. It's full of all kinds of stuff. Now that's not making it seized. It's not helping the clutch any, but that's not making it seized, but just an indication of how long it's been sitting around. I do have great access here. Me the phone. I do have great access to I have great access to the flywheel. See that? So what I'm going to try to do is use the flywheel to help unstick the engine. You get a lot of leverage under here. Oh, great. It's unseized, guys. Great, great, great. So I got so much leverage under here. And going, I think I'm in going in the opposite direction that I was able to unfreeze it. So I'm going to go all the way around twice to make sure that nothing's stuck. But looking at under that valve cover, I don't think any valves are going to be stuck. So cleaning out the flywheel cover. This is the type of stuff that's coming out of it. Okay, flywheel covers back on, engines unseized, on to the next step. Um, so here's the cover to the battery box. There's actually a battery in it, but it's old. So I'm not even going to bother with it. So we've got just cleaning up. My battery doesn't fit down inside, but that's fine. It fits here. As usual, we're going to touch it, make sure that we don't have any smoke. Nothing, so that's good. All right, let's see what the engine oil looks like before I go any further. Not good, not good. What we'll do, assuming we get this fired up, we're gonna warm it up just a little bit and change this oil. This is not good oil. It's been in there a long time, it's black. Well, no, it's, it's not as bad as I thought it was, honestly. It's really thick. It's probably like straight 50 or something, and it's dirty, but it's not black. Oh, wow. Not only is there coolant in it, it's green. Look at this. Fantastic. Well, that's a nice bonus we're not used to having. All right. I think it's time now we can uh, spin this thing over. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. That's all I could see. Right second there. one, second one, last one. Um, so what? Why, why would it do that? Why would it blow only out of two, not all six? The likely reason for that is that it leaked past the rings on the others into the crankcase and didn't sit in the engine, in the uh, piston. That's okay. I mean, I, I got to expect that with an engine that's been sitting, it's not going to have perfectly seated rings like that. Um, what matters to us is that the oil is no longer in the cylinder area. So to make absolutely sure, I'm going to try it once more and make sure that there's no residue left. The more oil that's in there, the harder it's going to be to start. How's that looking? It's still coming out the same. Still coming out? Mm -hmm. How much is coming out? The same same so it's like a is it blowing out or dripping out blowing okay then we got to do it a little bit more same. that should do it though that's enough you notice how it's spinning faster and faster that's because the lube is getting in there now. The oil pressure is building a little bit. The mystery oil is in the pistons, lubricating the pistons, so it's spinning faster and faster. All good signs. <laughs> Plugs are going back in. Excitement's starting to build. <laughs> so there's two different kinds of plugs over the years. Those with the gasket. See that gasket there? and those without. Um, these with the gasket do not need to be very tight. They need to be tight, they need to seal, but the gasket's there to seal it. So they don't need to be super tight. Okay, cut. Okay, plugs are in. Now we're gonna check for spark at the points. The cap is clipped on, it's not screwed on. Looking underneath the cap, it's kind of a cheapo, um, but it is relatively clean. I'm going to clean it out. It's been on a long time. See the, see the dust? Look at the dust. That's, that's a little unusual because it, it stays pristinely clean under here, and this one has not. So I'm going to clean that up. The rotor is in really good shape. It's been in a while, but it's in good shape. And the points, the points are right there. Super easy to see here. Um, Christina, why don't you go turn the key on and I'll see if I can get these points to fire. One. Is the battery hooked up? Yeah. Okay, hook that guy up. Three. Yep. Okay. Nothing. No, 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 don't, definitely don't do that. Okay, they're corroded, but I, I figured they would be. Okay, you can turn the key off. Ready? All right, I'm just going to clean this cap. It's very dirty, very dusty in there. So it's very simple. Just spray it. I use carb cleaner. I don't, you don't need to use electrical cleaner. All you're trying to do is clean them up. And you can see already, I don't know if the camera will show that or not, but it's, it's way better. That will conduct electricity a whole lot better than it would have otherwise. Okay. Uh, we paired. Yeah. Okay. Carburetor looks great. No problems. I'm going to uh, check the gas in the tank before I rely on any of this. Um, and if it's bad, I'm going to hook up my own fuel supply. Okay. All good. Fuel line's going in. I was going to hook it to the fuel pump, but I cannot find a connector that will work with it. So this will do for now. In case it starts pumping, we're going to run this into a can. All right, we're hooking up the fuel system. Getting ready to test fire it. This 
This moment of truth here. Get this out of the way of the fan. Okay. It's a big moment. All right, hit that starter button. Okay, try it again. Okay, hold it. Let me get the engine moved a bit. <clears throat> try that once more. Charging. <laughs> it's charging beautiful. I mean, perfect. Perfect. It's off. We're going to see if it'll refire. So just turn the key on and hit that starter button. Okay, I will say this. The, the positive battery post just sizzled. And okay, that means it's loose. All right, try that. warm enough now to get that oil out of there yeah i've got someone uh helping me out here changing the oil hey buddy hey well um the weather is scheming to stop us but i'm not going to let it because it's storming quite a bit but we've got a little break so i'm going to try to get the oil changed in this break yeah uh, all right, all the oil's drained out, nice and dry. I'm gonna put the plug back in. Imagine there's probably a drain at the bottom of this thing, which you're supposed to be using that I'm not. Are 
Okay. Yeah, we're gonna get this nice and clean, drop the filter in, and be done with the oil change. There it is. I have to wait till the rain stops. I'm getting ready to put everything back together. The rain stopped. Boy, it was tough for a while. Make sure this is the right. Looks it. A weird setup, really. Weird, weird setup how this works. That's got to be the strangest way of gasket to work that I've ever seen. I mean, does that make any sense at all? The gasket doesn't sit anywhere. Just kind of hangs out in the middle. Right? Does that look right? Not to me. No, this gasket doesn't appear to be right. No way, it's not right. That gasket is not right, it's too big. I just don't know if that's gonna seal though, it's, it's ripped. All right, this is buttoned back up. I don't know. A little concerned. All right, just gonna put my oil in here. Nothing too exciting, really. Except trying not to spill it. That's exciting. It's leaking. Oh, well, that's a bummer. They might. Yep. Next step is get this master cylinder out of here. It's no good. Um, two bolts hold it in. And these two lines have to come out. The big risk with these lines is that they break, which is a real hassle because then you have to either reflare them or replace them. So I'm going to try real hard not to break them. So I was able to get both of these loose. You got to love this truck. The lack of rust under here is fantastic. But both of these are now loose. So now these come off. Okay, it's out. A very simple unit, really. One bay on top. I'll try to get this out off camera because this is for sure going to be tight. But you add fluid to the floor. And it has two ports that feeds the vehicle. It's that simple. All right. Master cylinder's in. Now we're going to bleed the brakes. The way you do that is it's the brake line going in. There's a bleeder valve right above it. You just 
build up some pressure by having someone push the brake pedal and hold it down and then you just release open this up and it releases the pressure then you close it back up the person brings their foot back up and you repeat so uh, we're bleeding each wheel the dry, the passenger side I can't get anything through we'll have to check that out later why the driver's side rear we're getting some through now we're on to the front you have to do them in order um, father's from the master cylinder first I'm doing these a little bit out of order in the front but that's alright I'll make up for it later okay Hey, let's pump it up again then. Alright, I'm gonna slow it down. Much more. Like I couldn't almost get it to the floor that time. Oh good. Three, four, and five. That's the best one yet. Okay, let up. Uh, still nothing coming out of there. Let me try this one again because this one worked really well before. <laughs> okay, Jeff, go ahead. One, two, much more pressure than last time. Three, four, five, holding all the way oh, to the floor. Yeah. You hear that air? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Still holding. All right, let up. up. One more time. One, very easy this time. Two, three, four. But only on the last one did I get a little resistance. Now I'm just telling you all the way to the floor there. Still holding. Yeah, still hold it. Yep. Okay, let up. There is a lot of air in this one. Let's try this one one more time. I'll go real slow this time. Yep. One. Two, pressure this time. Three, much better. Four, I'm getting the workout. And five, holding. All the way to the floor. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was real good. Okay, yeah, there's still a ton of air in here, but I can actually hear the brakes working now in this wheel. We can let up. I'm gonna put some more fluid in there. All right. Yeah, it's loaded in there. Okay, we wondered why we couldn't get any air out of this wheel. This is the bleeder valve. There's a hole where the brake fluid's supposed to come out when it's open, and there's supposed to be a hole on the side here that the brake fluid goes through. No hole. Lots of rust, but no hole. So I need a few minutes to fix that. The brakes are bled. Um, it was tough. There was a lot of air in there, a lot, um, but it's done. So now we're attempting to get the oil filter to seal. The seal that came with it is defective. I mean, it's missized. So we're gonna try to get it to work with the old seal. I don't recommend this, um, but we'd really like to see if this thing will move, but if we can't if we can't get the oil filter to seal then we're not going to be able to do that okay we're going to fire it up and see if we can build some pressure with this crappy gasket if we can we've also got gas in the tank running through here through the fuel pump so if the fuel pump pumps we'll be able to see if the gas is any good um, okay so we need to hook the battery up Okay, Jeff. Nope, got it. No, it's this this thing's still leaking this gasket. Mm -hmm. Not as badly, but it's still leaking. Crap. That is a bummer. That's a major bummer. Pretty much puts us out of business. All right, hey everybody, it is day two back at the 54 Chevy truck. 
Um, the weather is plotting against us at every turn, so we're trying to get some time in before it starts raining again. Um, I have created a gasket out of gasket material, sheet gasket material that I have, that um, I'm going to try to use to get the oil filter canister here to seal. Um, as you recall, the old, the old rubber seal was ripped and it would not seal. We tried all kinds of stuff yesterday to try to get this to work and it wouldn't work. Um, so we're gonna give this a try because it's kind of stalled us um, at this point. We really want to drive this thing today and we can't do it if it's leaking oil all over the place. So more to come. Well, what does it mean to make a gasket? Well, I bought this kit a while back, um, not knowing if I'd ever need it, but thinking that I might. Felpro 3060. And what it is, is different types of gasket material. There's four types here. And on the front, it tells you what they're for, basically. Air cleaner, oil filter cup, water outlet, fuel pump mounting. But anyway, it's cork rubber sheet, rubber cellulose sheet, and rubber fiber sheet. So um, I need something thick. The only one that's thick is this one. So what I did, I laid down the cover for the oil filter housing and I traced around it and then I used a razor knife to cut my tracing by hand. That cut out a circle about like this, a little smaller, right? So I just cut between the edge and about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch that I needed all the way around. So this is, this is extra stuff. This is what's left of the sheet. And this is how I got the gasket made. So basically outside edge, go in about three eighths of an inch and just cut around. So if you look here, what we end up with, I don't know if you can see that, maybe, maybe that's easier. This here, that's the gasket I made. Yeah. I can't tighten this too tight, it's cork and I don't want to destroy it, but it's tight. So we're gonna hook the fuel system back up and give this a whirl. All right, we're gonna give it a try, see if it'll kick over today and if it leaks oil, go for it. Headlights out. Nothing but usually the headlights don't work. Oh yeah. Working out. Okay. It's also charging, which is good. Um, I'm going to check the dwell next. All right, so I'm checking the dwell. What's dwell? Dwell is the time that the points are closed. And it's measured in degrees because you've got a circular motion on the distributor. You want the time, the degrees closed on one of these to be around 30. So you just hook to the coil, you don't get zapped, like I just did. A 
let's see. It's pretty hard to read this, it's so dirty. Six cylinder scale. It's high. It's like 41 degrees. So that's too high. And it's idling. It's idling about right around 650, but the dwell is too high. Okay, we may have to do something about that. So one more thing about dwell. In the distributor, as it spins, there is a cam that's got high points on it, six, six high points. And when those high points come around to the points, it opens them. When the high point passes, it closes them. And the time that it's closed at that passing point is the dwell. That can be messed up. It could be too wide of a dwell, meaning the points are opening too far or too, too narrow when they're not opening uh, far enough. Um, so the way that you fix that is you adjust the points inside the distributor with a feeler gauge so that at the high point they only open a certain amount. And I'll show you how to do that because these are, these are really too far off to leave as is. So this is a, a feeler gauge. Um, General Motors vehicles newer than this don't need this. Um, as much as this thing does because this one you have to actually take the cap off to adjust the points but as you can see there's values here and we want according to the manual I said earlier 30 that's wrong it's 16 so I need the points at their highest opening position to be that wide no more no less Put it again and check if I set the points right go ahead Much better. All right. Awesome. It's out. <laughs> Okay, let's see if this pump will work with the new filter. Okay, hold up. Okay, try it.
So all set today, good day all around. Uh, this old girl's in the garage where the owner is going to do some work to it, get it nice and reliable and roadworthy. Um, been a fantastic couple of days. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure that you click subscribe. I've uh, got a lot of nice videos coming and thank you for watching.